so good to see you again and, and to be here supporting this project. Liz, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? My name is Lizzie Jarrett. I'm a proud Bunjalung, Gumbangi and Dungadi woman who's currently living and benefiting on the land of the Gadigal people. I am labelled as what they call a social justice advocate. A bit of a weird label. But to me, I'm, in other words, I'm just a human that's out here trying to make sure we're all human and that humanity is something that we can all prosper towards, where we can all feel safe, loved, cared for and nurtured in this country called what I call white Australia. I don't even like the word Australia because it denies the truth of what it is. So, and I'm a single mom with three beautiful boys and I'm part of the Race Will Not Welcome campaign because it's an essential campaign that I believe needs to be out there in our communities today, every day, on repeat until we get to really dismantle what is white Australia and the supremacy that is racism against black, brown and marginalised people. So yeah, that's me. So it's so great to see you Liz today and making time to come and be part of this. I mean, you've been part of this from day one oh, yeah. because this is where you live and you've seen racism affect people you love, yourself. And when the time came to do something about it in public stand and having something visual, you were right there in the middle of it. <laughs> I guess I wanted to start by asking you, is racism a problem in Australia like we are saying it is? Racism is founded, built, and still today, 250 years benefits. I mean, Australia benefits off racism. That's, that's the finding of it. Australia, like, the colonialists never came here with the idea of peace, mm -hmm. of harmony, that they like to use this word now to, again, disguise and whitewash what is a day that's meant to actually give people the chance to have a conversation about how racism is actually affecting the present day and, and their society. So Australia, oh, well, you only have to go back through history. The White Australian Policy Act tells you why, is there any, why was there a reason to have the word white if there's no racism here. Mm. So Australia is, yeah, it's a crime scene as far as I'm concerned. Mm. And it's pilfered and p entrenched with racism all the way from when the first boats came, from when that Lieutenant Cook came, he wasn't even a captain. And the first thing he ever did was shoot two young black men on the shores here. And that was back in 1770. And yeah, so to answer that question in a whole, like Australia is racism, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I go to different courthouses every week and watch young children be taken from their parents. I see only a couple of weeks ago, a young boy chased by the police on his car who now has no life, 16 years old, Aboriginal boy. So the crime scene's still alive every day and racism is still one of the biggest problems that we have to yet win. People need to understand that it's not about being angry, it's not about trying to take over someone's system as what they did to us. Mm. It's just about trying to unpack and bring truth to light mm. and let people just have the common reality of what they call the Australian way of life. Mm. How in their anthem, we are all one and we are all free. I am not one and I am definitely not free. Mm. And I doubt, think that I doubt very much you would be in this country either, my oh, sister. No. You know what I mean? No. Exactly. So it's, you know, it's the essential that Australia need to have these conversations because otherwise we can sit here for another 200, no, actually we won't live another 250 years. Let's be real. There'll be no more my people left. Mm. Like, you know, only our resilience and the brilliance that we have, connection to our land and love for other humanity of people, no matter what they've done to us, is the reason why we're still existing. I have three young sons and every day they leave my gate or every time we leave each other, there's a full like three minute mama moment where I have to be like, okay, if the police pull you over, yes boss, no boss, three bags full boss, if you have your phone on you, pull it out and record the interaction. 
Do not get lippy. Do not get. Do not have a presence of trying to assert yourself because as soon as you assert yourself, they see an angry black young man. They see someone who has no respect for their white law, and they can literally take your life away. So I literally have a moment with my children every time they leave my sight to make sure. That is hard. Yeah, that's the essential. Just it's what I have to do to make sure my children understand the reality of who they are in this world, of what they're seen mm. as society in this world. Mm. They're seen as Aboriginal boys, so what does that mean? You only got to look in the newspaper, you only got to look at the stereotype, you only got to look at statistics. Mm. They're, they're, they're labelled as thieves, savages, uneducated, belligerent, illiterate. You know, ugh, I can keep going, keep going, you know, with all the beautiful verbs of the English language that they've given us, but my children are far from any of those. So you seem to see value in having conversations mm -hmm. and so forth. And with this campaign, Racism Not Welcome, and the signs in certain places, it is, it is starting conversations about mm -hmm. racism. So Australia, we don't seem to talk about it at all. So what do you see in conversation that is so important? Conversation is the essential. It's not, not even important to me. It's essential. It's like without conversation, there's no learning. We need mm. to There's sit no truth and talk. There's and no, and share. you know, like this word they like to chuck around, like reconciliation, mm -hmm. things like that. Harmony Day, for instance. Like, you know, without conversation of being real on the ground with the people that oppression is happening to, nothing's going to change. Mm at all. We need to sit and talk and listen and share and then take action mm. to eliminate racism in its most purest form, which is white supremacy. But also having the conversations with the, the right people mm -hmm. in the conversations, isn't it? Definitely, you know what I mean? Like you can't, as they say, you don't preach to the converted. You know, conversation has to be for those to are uh, so comfortable in their skin that they didn't have the fear I do when they walk out their door. Mm, mm. They're comfortable in just to walk down the street and benefit from genocide and smile in their day, mm. go to their office, drive their BMWs, own their, pay their land rates. But to have them sort of comfortability people and make them sit here with us mm. and have an uncomfortable conversation mm. can do a lot of good. It, that's right. But yeah. that's the bit that they are not keen or oh, willing definitely. to participate no, in. Definitely not. That's why these signs are so essential too. Mm. Because, you know, uh, in my opinion, <laughs> only a racist has a problem with that sign. <laughs> Anyone else who sees that sign, even young children who don't know, are only learning to read yet. Mummy, racism not welcome. What does that what mean? Does it mean? Let, that, let that mother explain to her daughter mm. or her son in their narrative, in, in, in their privilege mm. or not privileged, in their ignorance or not ignorance, have a conversation with why is there a street sign in my street saying racism not welcome. Mm. I see the importance of having a conversation. I also find it really tiring. How do we get allies to help us do this work? Because I'm really tired. <laughs> Oh, my sister, I hear you on that one. <laughs> and it is tiring. And, you know, for allies to be allies, they have to step out of their privilege, firstly, which is very hard, you know? These young students you talk about and, and people that I even know, because their, their mothers and fathers and their grandmothers and their benefits before that all have had this narrative of colonial way is okay. Mm. So these young students don't really get any eye openers until they come across someone like you in class or they come across someone like me. So for allies, yeah, it's important that they step out of that privilege, get educated, mm. sit on the ground with grassroots, get inside your community and find the brown black voices that are leading the way, learn from them, mm. from them. Don't come into that space and show them how to do things. Don't come into that space and say, oh, but this is a better way of doing it. No, we're over that. It's 2022. We're educated. We know how to use a language. We know how to use your law. Just come, listen, mm. Mm. learn, 
and then take your lessons and spread the seeds of how grassroots want you to. Mm. The most important thing about allies is they all come from family. Mm. So once you get one ally, their job is to go and build your community mm. for your family now. Mm. Go and talk to your white educator. Go and talk to your foreign immigrant friend, bus driver, who you don't really talk to at any other time. Mm. But now you're understanding how racism might impact that person mm. and the privilege you have. Go and have a conversation. But yeah, the most important things for allies is to listen, mm. step away from the privilege, accept that you actually have privilege. Unpack and unlearn mm. what privilege is to you compared to what me and you face on the outside world. Mm. So to be an effective ally then is to really learn about racism, take time to understand how it manifests, how it's created, how it's maintained, how it's protected, and actually do something about it. Yeah. Yeah. And not have the burden be left on the people that are experiencing this awful thing. And, and, and that's really, to us, that's what allies can do. Yeah.